Hello everybody and welcome to Wesley's Plant World with me Wesley Peterson and today as you can see it's a beautiful sunny day outside and I've decided to do a house plant video for you because I have an update on some plants that I showed you quite a while ago when I did a video on how to make lickable steaks. So before you carry on seeing this video, I suggest you go back and see my video on how you make those lickable steaks because that is what I'm going to be showing you today and the result of the plants that I used in that video. So the first plant I want to bring forth to show you is my beautiful plant that I have behind me here. Oh, and it's a bit heavy because it is full of water <laughs> or nutrient mix, I should say. This plant is my beautiful Philodendron Erubescence Pink Princess. And when I made my video on how to make this lickable steak, I showed you that I used a metal rod behind to hold the steak up in place. And this plant was around halfway down the steak, I think, something like that. And the plant had been resting in a passive hydroponic state in a nutrient mix in its container. Getting my Philodendron Aerobescence Pink Princess ready for semi-hydro, the long method. Look at her beautiful leaves. This little pink splotch is gorgeous. This one's lovely too. Well, I have a lot of cuttings here five all together and look at all these lovely dark roots ready to be put in a water nutrient mix before they'll be potted up in lecker later in semi-hydro this leaf down here is beautiful there she is all back together again in full hydro i hope she's going to grow out lots of lovely water roots now and being in a clear container, I'll be able to check the nutrients and clean out when necessary. Wonderful. And then when it had grown out more water roots, I decided to plant it in leckables so that my whole plant will be in passive hydroponics. And I've also done a video on what passive hydroponics is, so you can go back and see that video as well. But anyway, here, passive hydroponics is that my plant is not in soil at all. It is residing in lecker balls and a nutrient mix in this cachet pot at the bottom here. And well, as I look around, I can see some of the dark roots on this plant doing quite well. It's very difficult to see the roots on this one because they're dark, but I can see some roots on the edge. And you can see my whole plant is very happy because it has reached right up to the top of this lecker ball steak. And well, what is the result of this plant? The result is, if I look all the way around the plant, that its aerial roots have not grown out into this lecker ball steak at all. And that is because the roots on this plant weren't very thick from the beginning and they all look very dry on the vines. And the truth of the matter also is that when I started with this plant, I had it in its passive hydroponic state. Then I was at my cottage for a couple of weeks and I came back and it had actually dried completely out in its cachet pot. So the roots had started drying out and the plant did have to recuperate and start growing out roots again from what it had left. So it wasn't the best start for this plant, but despite that, it has carried on growing out all the way up to the top of my stake. And the thing that's happened is all the leaves at the bottom that were bigger are still big, are still viable and beautiful, but the leaves as it's gone up have got smaller and smaller. That doesn't mean that it's lost its variegation of pink, because if I look at these small leaves up here, and I will show you close up in a moment, they still have the characteristic pink princess variegation going on. So they are still this deep burgundy colour and this lovely rich pink colour. And well, I am just happy that my plant is doing well, it's grown up to the top of the stake and now I will be pruning the top off because I don't want the plant to get any taller than that. 
this is absolutely fine and the plant is doing well next to my display behind me so it gets some of the light from the grow lights and also from the window behind me you can see here which is producing a lot of lovely sunshine today so yes if your plant has good roots from the beginning then you can expect it will grow up your leckable stake absolutely fine and carry on and if it has rich aerial roots that could grow into your leckable stake then that will happen too and to show you that is the case i'm going to bring another plant forth now that i also showed in that leckable stake making video and you will see a stark contrast between these plants because at that time this plant was the tallest one much much taller than the other one i'm going to show you and now just wait until you see the result of the next plant so i'm going to put this one on the side for now and go back into my jungle here <laughs> and bring out my next plant because you will be amazed at this because well i am this and i'm going to show you the back side first because it's really unbelievable what's happened here this plant and you can't see me anymore because it's a whole jungle i showed you when it was a few cuttings that I placed at the bottom of this leckable steak. And that video I made was seven months ago now. So this is a seven month process, just so that you know how long this has taken. I actually did a shorts video of this and I'm just going to plot that in now so you can see the whole process of how I transferred this plant or the cuttings that were in soil to the steak and then put them in this passive hydroponic system and then you will understand why I am so pleased <laughs> with the outcome of this plant. This is my Epipremnum aureum mandula. Look at these absolutely gorgeous leaves. This plant at the moment is in a pot with soil as you can see here growing out these cuttings very beautifully. These are all the lovely roots that I'm about to wash off thoroughly so that I can transfer this plant to semi-hydroponics. But before that, I place them in a nutrient mix so that the roots can grow out more water roots and rinse off the last part of the soil so they're ready to be placed into leka. I've made myself a leka pole for them to grow up and I have tied them to the bottom of this pole now so they're ready to go into their pot with the lecker balls and here you can see the roots here you can see my beautiful plant and in its cachet pot ready for nutrient mix this is me done so backside again i have all the leaves facing me at the moment and that is because i've also learned that the best thing to do is not to turn your plants around to try and get an even growth because then you'll always get spread out leaves that are always chasing the light what you want is all your leaves facing forward towards the light so i have this plant up in that bright window you can see behind me there so during the morning time as you can see right now it is getting bright direct light even though this is a epipremnum aureum mandula it gets some bright direct light and then it's dappled light that comes in and it's just keeping this plant so happy because the light at the moment isn't intensive on the leaves okay it's not the middle of the summer in the middle of the summer the sun is high up and it doesn't penetrate into these windows directly so it filters in so this is absolutely perfect for this plant but now i want to turn it around to the side so you start seeing what is going on here and you can see don't worry about my steak not being straight i'm really not bothered about that and that's actually because it needs some nutrient mix in the bottom this is the side view look at all the leaves growing out on this plant and now look at it from the front wow wow <laughs> and wow is all i can say this plant was a few inches tall when i made my video seven months ago and now it's all the way up to the top and not just that i am going to have to prune off the top because now my plant well i'm going to tie the top piece up the last piece like that as you can see and then that's it my plant is escaping from the top of the pole now it has been so so happy in this passive hydroponic system 
growing in liquor balls in a nutrient mix for seven months and every single layer of new leaves on this plant has produced bigger and bigger leaves and if i had a taller pole which i really wish i did have now i would manage to get this plant to go up to my ceiling with the most huge leaves but i said to myself due to space constraints in my apartment here i didn't want it to grow taller than the stake i'm going to be happy with the way it is and i have to stick with that so what i will do is prune the top off and i will add that to the bottom of this stake i would just excavate a hole out add it into there and leave it to do its thing. I'm not going to put it in anything else, screw out roots or anything like that. I'm just going to put it straight into the bottom and leave it to carry on with the rest of the plant. Keep it watered up the top there and it should find its way down into the nutrient mix in no time. So this is the result of the Epipremnum aurium mandula, which absolutely loves this passive hydroponic way of living, but not just that, it's actually really loving this lickable steak because this plant has actually grown aerial roots into the steak and that is what I wanted to see because then I can see that the plant is wanting to support itself and I will show you that in a moment closer up so you can see what's going on but I am just so pleased with the result of both of my beautiful plants here and the proof that passive hydroponics does work. You can transfer plants from soil to passive hydroponics quite easy as long as you get as much of the organic material off the roots of your plant in the beginning. And if you're worried about the soil roots turning into mush and degrading in your liquor balls in the beginning phase, well then you can keep them in passive hydroponics with just the nutrient mix and then go on and add the liquor balls once you see that water roots have grown out. But I did this straight away and this plant's wonderful. I did the long method with my philodendron, Erebescence Pink Princess, and well, both ways work out fabulously. So now, let's go in for a closer look so you can really see what's going on around these beautiful plants on their lecker ball stakes. So here we have my philodendron erubescence pink princess with its beautiful big leaves. You can see the lecker balls and the nutrient mix in the bottom of this container. And you can see how the plant is growing forward up the stake. And if we look at the lickable stake, you won't be able to see many of the roots from this plant inside it, but the plant is enjoying growing up it. You can see it's grown right to the top. So if I turn the plant around, you can see all of the beautiful leaves that are going on. Look at the beautiful variegation going on there. Absolutely fabulous. And then look at this leaf with beautiful variegation. The leaves may be small, but they're still variegated. And if we go further down, you can see the variegation in the leaves down here. So this plant is also doing fabulous in its semi-hydroponic lecker ball steak situation. Just wonderful. So look at this beautiful plant close up. Nobody can tell me that this passive hydroponic setup with a lickable stake wasn't a huge success. Because look at the leaves on this beautiful plant and how they're getting bigger and bigger healthy, variegated, and gorgeous, right up to the top. They are really stunning and basically just magnificent. Look at them. This plant loves, 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 loves semi-hydroponics. I've tried to grow these plants in soil plenty of times and they brown out, they yellow out, and they struggle. It seems that this plant is much more happy in a kind of 
epiphytic style where its roots are free from being smothered with soil and they can reach down themselves into the nutrient mix at the bottom of the pot. Here we have the sideward view so you can see how the leaves grow forward towards the light. And they're very happy like that. All the way up to the top and this plant just wants to keep on growing. And now I just want to show you how the area roots are growing into this leckable stake. Look at this. There's one here. And there's one here. Right inside the leckable stake. And look here. One growing in and clinging on. And here you can see another one about to enter into the leckable stake. So this plant is truly enjoying growing in this situation. This is the back of the stake and you can see how all the leaves are absolutely gorgeous and that this technique has worked out fabulously all the way down. And if we look into the pot, you can see the situation with the liquor balls and the nutrient mix. No soil in sight. And this is the result of that. I am just so pleased with this plant. So I really, really hope you enjoyed seeing the close up and how these plants are doing seven months on. And well, I can just say that this works and it's fantastic. And even lecker ball stakes, these plants will grow roots into them if they have thick, beautiful aerial roots. And I do water these plants from the top of the stakes all the way down so that the aerial roots do get some of the nutrients directly on them. And I'm going to show you that right now quickly. So let's get both my plants together here in the middle and turn them to the side quickly just so that you can see how I water. There they are. I get my watering can and this does get a little bit messy now because there are roots and so forth around but I water from the top like this and it trickles all the way down into my pots as much as possible and as you can see it does get a little bit messy now because i've got big leaves oh my plant is getting so heavy that it's actually tipping forward as well and this one let's have a little look what happens here so this one the water is staying more inside of my steak and i have a bigger pot at the bottom so any water that drips out to the sides goes back into the pot but this is basically how I carry on watering my plants. I always water from the top of the stake so that I do get moisture all the way around all of the area roots and all the way around my plant. And yes, it only stays moist for a very short period of time, but it does anyway help my plants. So now they are both full up with their nutrient mix. So even though my, as you can see here, my Epipremnum aurium mandula falls over, that's because the base of this plant now is too small for the top part. This plant has actually got very thick vines and very big leaves growing out, so it's top heavy. But you can easily go in and rectify this. This is not a problem whatsoever. I have a pot next to me here with a bigger pot. Basically, it's just about going in and repotting that plant into a bigger pot like this, so it's more stable, just like this one. You can do what you want. But I am liking this like this, so I don't need to do anything. And it rests up against my window, so it's absolutely fine. I always let my plants stay facing outwards, out of my apartment towards the sun. And I only turn them round if I want to look at them, or if I have guests that I want to show the beautiful leaves inside, away from the light. But then I turn them back to keep this lovely, thick, lush look, and for my plant to be happy. Because in nature, plants only face one way they're stuck in their positions so they don't go and turn themselves around all this way and that way. The natural way of a plant like this, the vining plant to grow, is one way. So keep your plants growing like that and you will have a healthy, 
happy, beautiful looking plant. So all I have to say now is thank you very much once again for watching this video. Please remember to like, subscribe and hit the bell so you know when my next video will be coming up and I will see you again very, very soon. Goodbye.